Hello, my name is Robert Brill. I'm a doctoral candidate in health psychology, and this is my fibromyalgia podcast series. Today I'd like to talk about digging deep with chronic illness. When you have a chronic illness, you know inherently well what it means to live with pain and fatigue, among other things. Every day can bring new challenges that make actions like exercising to maintain your health, cleaning the house, working a job, or even simple things in life like thinking about getting out of bed, debating about taking a shower, considering going to the grocery store, deciding to participate, can all be a battle. These actions can create conflict for you, and conflict is not something you do well with. Since I became too sick to do many of these things often, or on a regular basis, I made the decision to remain in the game the best I could. I have failed and I have quit more times than I can count but I never give up completely. If I fail at completing a task, I just try again. If I quit going to the gym or biking or doing yard work, I'll begin again tomorrow. And if tomorrow doesn't work out, then I have the day after that to participate again. If you've ever committed to something important, then you likely know what it means to dig deep. We dig deep for the strength to finish a workout. We dig deep for the courage to do what is necessary. We dig deep for the hope that everything will work out. We dig deep for the patience we need to coexist in society. We dig deep for the wisdom to teach our children correctly. And with fibromyalgia, we dig deep just to get through the day sometimes. I decided to apply this principle to all of my shortcomings that have really resulted from my illness. Often my abilities have dwindled down to the action word that precedes them, such as, I want to be productive in society and work. I desire to exercise today. I intend to watch my daughter's basketball game today. I hope my pain doesn't get the best of me today. I never plan to fail or to quit or to be incapable, but things are what they are, and sometimes I have to dig deep to overcome my obstacles. Digging deep is much more than applying extra effort. It's the will that comes from our inner strength deep down inside to a place that many of us are not used to tapping into. Digging deep is the principle that a power lifter uses to break records, or that a marathon runner uses to finish the race, or that a hiker uses to survive when lost in the woods. Digging deep is what we as sick people have to do constantly. We have to prepare our minds to overcome obstacles that wouldn't normally be difficult. We have to persevere beyond what we have traditionally been used to. We have to create new limits. For me to go to the gym most days, I have to dig deep. I have to persuade myself that it's necessary. An example of this, of how this can work, is that I force myself to leave the house, number one. I convince myself that I have to exercise, number two. I arrive at the gym and I leave all my inhibitions at the door, number three. I have to psych myself out, literally. I talk to myself as if I'm going through the motions with one goal in mind, to not quit, and to finish what I set out to do. Digging deep can be defeated in your mind simply by talking yourself out of the activity or the action. If you don't want to go and do it, you probably won't. So you make a plan in advance, and you stick to the actions as if they were necessary as food or water or breathing. You have to eat, right? But when you're sick, you have to exercise. Try this simple example to motivate you to complete your goal. When you're at the gym and you're on the treadmill or the bike or the elliptical or whatever and you've gone three minutes and you just know that you can't go on anymore, stop and imagine that your child is in jeopardy somehow and that you have to keep going for them. That's digging deep. Don't worry about how it sounds. Chronic illness calls for out-of-the-box measures sometimes and this has been the fuel for my fire for years. Each time I cannot push on anymore, I use a guided image that motivates me to push on. This applies to whatever you're doing. I've made significant improvements in my wellness by using this approach, and so can you. Thank you.